Uh, just a, a quick couple of questions. Uh, firstly, um, if the if Sayyid can explain to me the um, difference uh, between Sunni breaking fast um, 10 minutes earlier. Um, I mean, according to what I understand, um, it should be done at um, at sunset. Now, obviously, with modern technology, we, we, we've, we're available to get the time of sunset. So if you can explain using Quran and Sunnah why there's a 10 minute, um, 10, 15 minute delay. And also my second. The first question regarding the time to break fast. I want you to go to Quran and recite the surah, which is called Surah Al-Baqarah, the verse number 187, in which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the rules of fasting and he says ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل then complete your fasting till night means we must complete our fast till the beginning of the night and the beginning of the night is not only when you see the sun down no you have to be sure it is down how the reflection of it should vanish. Our Sunni brothers break their fast 10 minutes earlier. Why? They just see the sun down, they break their fast. We say, no, you have to wait till the reflection of the sun also vanishes. That will take 10 minutes or 12 minutes or maybe a little bit more or less. It is in fact between, between 8 to 12 minutes in the usual countries, but in the north of the earth, like Europe, it might take up to 15 minutes. So this is the time for the reflection of the light of the sun to vanish. And as we read in Quran, Layl in Arabic means night. And we break our fast when night starts not earlier than that. Your second question. Yes, please. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum, is anybody there? Hi, yes. Um, I was wondering, what's the difference between a Sunni and a Shia? I don't really know. Okay. 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 Yeah, good question. What is the difference between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims? Before going to the differences, let me tell you the common things. Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims have got majority of things common together. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in one God, Allah. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being the last and the greatest and final Prophet. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in Quran being the last book from Allah. Both Sunnis and Shias pray morning, zuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, and the number of rak'ats, same. Two for morning, four for zuhr, four for asr, three for maghrib, four for isha. Both of them fast, and they fast same month of Ramadan. You don't find Shias fasting the month of Ramadan and Shias fasting the month of Shawwal. No. So, same month, same duty. Both of them go to the same place for Hajj, Mecca, and same time. So if you analyze the common thing between them, cannot be counted. But there are differences. Main difference is who are the leaders of Islam and Muslims after the Prophet. Shia Muslims believe in what Allah said, that وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا Allah appoints the leaders, the divine leaders of people, as He appoints the Prophets. He appoints the successor of the Prophets. It is not a matter of the people, or military, or tricks, or politics. No. From Allah. So we believe that after the, after the Prophet, the Prophet himself told the Ummah that after me, the leader of Islam and Muslims is Imam Ali. Peace be upon him. And after him, 
Ahlul Bayt. This is the main difference. Our Sun brothers believe in other leadership, not the leadership of Ahlul Bayt. And from this main issue comes another very important issue from where to get the real Sunnah of the Prophet. We take it from the most authentic source who are Ahlul Bayt. Our Sun brothers take it from others. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum. Yes, please. Yes, Sayyid. I want to ask, uh, uh, is Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam with Sidna Zayn? On the line. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, my name is Fatima and I'm calling from Canada. I, I would like to ask this, the noble Sayyid a question. Please. Yeah. Uh, Sayyid, I used to be a Sunni, and then after intensive uh, studying, I now accepted the Ahlul Bayt. Alhamdulillah. And I just wanted to know, you know, Laylatul uh, Laylatul Qadr falls um, for the Sunnis on the 21st, the 23rd, 21st, and so on. And now we are celebrating it tonight, which is, uh, you know, the, the 19th. Could you just give me a little clarity on that, please? Okay. okay. Laylatul Qadr has got many narrations among Sunnis and Shias. Our Sunni brothers have got many narrations, more than 10 narrations in Sunni books about Laylatul Qadr. But maybe the most famous among Sunni brothers is 27th. They call it the big night of Qadr, 27th of the month of Ramadan. According to the narration from Ahlul Bayt, السلام, no, it is one of three, either 19th or 21st or 23rd. And the possibility of Laylat al Qadr to be one of these two nights, 21st or 23rd, is more. And the possibility of Laylat al Qadr to be 23rd is much more because of many authentic narrations. Why Laylat al Qadr? are kept ambiguous because Allah wants us to get more blessings in more than one night. To purify ourselves and seek from him his blessings and, and his help and his forgiveness and his mercy in more than one night. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, well, it's Islam. This is uh, Hassan from Sandri. Welcome. Yes, please. I'm the uh, Sunni brother. I have uh, phoned up a couple of times and salams to Sheikh Musawi as well. It's a question I've asked before on al TV to another scholar, but it was not answered satisfactorily. Um, the question is regarding the identity of the Ulul Amr uh, mentioned in chapter 4, verse 59, yes. the holders of authority. Yes. Yes. Now, I've read uh, two um, different Shia interpretations on this. Uh, the first one being from um, the book on Imamate by Musawi Nari, who said that uh, the holders of authority can only be the progeny of Ali and Fatima, radiallahu anhu. And also, um, Ayatollah Yazdi Puya, in his commentary of the Quran, where he says uh, that the holders of authority have the same status as the messenger in uh, ruling the Muslims, so they have to be infallible. The new interpretation, uh, I've read from Harun Abdullah's book, uh, The Missing Link, that um, not only the imams, but the deputies or the representatives can be ulil amr. And Ayatollah Khomeini in his book, um, uh, Islamic State, he said that the fuqaha, i.e. the deputies of the, uh, uh, of the infallible imams, can also be the ulil amr. Now, in my view, um, it doesn't matter whether there's a difference of opinion or not, because, as you know, in the Sunni school, there are differences of opinion. But where it matters is where the foundation is actually challenged. In this case, the foundation of Shiaism is that only the infallibles can be uh, ul amr, but so we see in the new interpretations that even fallible human beings, i.e., they might be religious fuqaha, but they are fallible, can also be ul amr. So it's a big contradiction that I see. That's okay. the question. Okay, brother. Thank, Thank you. you for your question. This verse in Quran, Ati'u Allah, obey Allah. وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَهُ Obey the Messenger. وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ 
means those who have got the authority to order you.